Hey, this is Matt once again. We're about to another review. There's another paid request, this time from Matthew. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos, topics, reactions, commenters, reviews, re-reviews, randomness, news, rankings, whatever, feel free to send them either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. I'll, I'll try to get to it as soon as I can. But this is for a film called Duma from 2005, which I had never heard of. I didn't know what this was. I'm like, Duma? And then when I read the synopsis, I'm like, is this a remake of that one... There's like an 80s, 90s film called Cheetah? With like Teeth Coogan from Adventures in Babysitting and Toy Soldiers. Where it's about like Orphan Cheetah and a family gets it. No, I mean, it's kind of, but not really. This is a movie that... I thought it was pretty decent. I think it's a pretty decent film where the director did a great job utilizing the character of the cheetah and the way the guy filmed animals like a nature documentary where it's real animals, real cheetahs. When the cheetahs run at full speed, the director is able to capture that speed rather well. And using like crocodiles, wildebeest, uh, there's this uh, galago, what they call a bush baby, which very weird but cute little monkey primate thing. Bush babies was called galago. Because it takes place in South Africa, and the lead kid I believe is actually from South Africa, so his accent, you know, everything is on point, uh, and the kid did fine. He, he did fine. And the fact that you didn't bring in a kid to try to do a fake accent helps delve into the, the story better so you're not so taken out of it. And it, like, it's a nice usage of real animals because it starts with a, a cheetah who has her babies all done for real. No CG, no special effects or anything. And then you get the idea that the mama's killed by a lion and the baby cheetahs are orphaned. One wanders on the road and a father and son finds it, take it in, and care for it. And you see a bit of a montage of it growing, the kid bonding with the cheetah, the dad Sally is sick, but realizes that one day, because it is a wild animal, we're going to have to bring it back sooner or later. And they name it Duma because that is Swahili for cheetah. So I did, you wonder what the hell is Duma? Is Swahili for cheetah. And like I said, the, I mean, it's, cheetahs are cool. <laughs> I mean, as weird as that sounds, cheetahs are fucking cool. With how fast they are, and you know, I like cats. It's a big cat. Grant's a cat. You don't want a pet, otherwise you get your face. But the way it's say train because I don't know if you can really train them but just the kid like all the time is with the cheetah and because perhaps be, the kid did grow up in South Africa so he has a handle with animals and wild animals there are so many towns where they're next to each other and he's petting it and uh, like the whole movie they're in the same shots it again it shows the some that sounds simple but it's funny, you look at like a, what was that Harrison Ford film where they CGI'd the fucking dog, Call of the Wild or something? I can't remember. It like cost, what, a hundred million dollars? And Because the fucking dog is CGI. This is a low budget, well, I'm guessing low budget. A real cheetah. The entire fucking movie is a real cheetah with a real little boy. And then again, there's real crocodiles, there's a stampede with wildebeest. Again, that, that little cute little bush baby thing. Galago, I forget the exact name of it. All done for real. On camera. On fucking camera. But then, here's a forward movie. You gotta see giant dog the entire fucking film. I don't get it. Sometimes I just sometimes I just don't get the shit. I don't get it. Explain it to me, please. Explain it to me. Yeah, train the dog. The cheetah fucking did shit. And I think you train the dog better than the cheetah. 
Remember more? Of course, that's not including dog movies like Bindo or Lassie or whatever the fuck. But anyway, going off tangent. So sadly, the father passes away. The family, mom, son, and Cheetah have to move to the city. I don't know if you needed the sequence of stuff where they move to the city because they're not in the city lawn. It seems like you could cut it out and the story would not be affected as much or really at all. Because what happens is they move to the city and almost immediately the kid goes to school and almost immediately the cheetah gets out, gets into the school, steers the bullies. This is like on the first day, and the kid and the cheetah escape, and then it's like, you know what, I gotta take you back into the wild. I mean, you could cut all that out and say, well, the dad passed away, and we need to move, we don't have time to do this, and the kid's like, no, I'm gonna do this, sorry mom, and then go off, like... Where that whole scene with the school goes by so quick and fast, so it, it's not like it was a bother, but at the same time, it went by so quick and fast, it made me go, Do we even really need this set of sequences? It doesn't really matter a whole lot in the scheme of things. Well, again, you could edit it out and you would not have really missed much. So, I don't know, I mean, there's this little nitpick thing. And then the kid gets a motorcycle with a sidecar, and the cheese in the sidecar. They run out of gas. They're in the middle of the fucking desert, pretty much. They meet this drifter, Rip. I recognize the actor because it's Iman Walker. Iman Walker, he was the bad guy in this Michael Jai White film I like called Blood and Bone. Honestly, one of Michael Jai White's better movies. Yes, it's directed video, but it's basic fun ass kicking martial arts stuff street fighting Michael Jai White is I think he did rather good especially on the physical stature and blood and, like blood and bone is a fun movie if you like martial arts movies yes this directed video but I think it's actually one of the better directed video martial arts films in the recent years for his basic just ass kickery but Iman Walker was the bad guy in that. He's been in other stuff too. I think he was in Tears of the Sun with Bruce Willis, I believe. But uh, he did a good job here. Because you're not quite sure if you could trust him or not. Then ultimately they bond. And pretty much the rest of the film is the little adventure they go on. Where, again, they, they find this little bush baby thing. Which I thought looked pretty cool, pretty cute. Because that's, that's a creature I've really seen a lot on stream. In particular on film. Um, so that was a nice little addition. And like I said, the try to find a way to make this bicycle into like a, a sail with parachutes in order to move across the desert. Or they got to deal with a stampede of wildebeest or try to find food. And through, along the way, the characters are bonding a little bit. And they form a bit of a bond. And as Iman Walker's character says, listen, people go when they're ready to go. Not when you are. And you know, you know, the kid pretty much coming to terms with what happened to his dad. And the cheetah also coming to terms and it has to learn to be a bit of a wild animal again. So it will survive here, which it does. And you know, not to give everything away, but it, it ends sweet and sweet. Does it end on a downer or bullshit note? Nice little farewell. It's nothing extravagant. It's nothing big explosions, action. It's not that. It's a... I think this is the same director who did The Black Stallion. And I think... Far Away Home. I think it's the same director. I know it's the same director of The Black Stallion. I think they also did Far Away Home. And it's kind of in that tradition of an animal. Like, like you would see back in the day. 
maybe what was that one with Ethan Hawke and the wolf I can't believe I forgot the name of it damn it someone's going to say in the comments but it's in that type of tradition and they don't really make a lot of those type of movies anymore either it's an animal that talks like this is not a new film but the zookeeper or is it gotta be some kind of fart joke or shit joke? Or is it gotta be some other kind of other bullshit? Or nowadays be some kind of fucking agenda? Or they CGI the entire thing like the Harrison Ford movie with the dog. So it was. If you if you like the usage of real, true to life animals, no CG being used, decent enough story. Characters worked well. If you think cheetahs are cool like I do. It's a pretty decent film. Because a little bit of a decent adventure. Again nothing grandiose. I wouldn't say it really has a big scope to it. I guess not like big explosions and big action set pieces. But there's a couple. Whether you're dealing with the. Through the water. Through the rapids. You know. And uh, you know. Like I said, the lead kid didn't do too bad of a job. Iman Walker grew to like him. As we get to know a little bit of the character. The cheetah. The way it's used. I'm sure they, they had a couple cheetahs. Maybe five, maybe six, maybe ten. I don't know. But that's utilized fairly well. And uh, pretty decent film. I think it's a pretty decent flick. And maybe a little bit underrated. Because... I had never heard of this film before, and that's too bad, because there's a lot of other shit that I have heard of that got more attention. Sally, that's how it goes. So yeah, if you at all like those kind of, you know, seeing real animals on the screen, it's worth a look. So with that said, thanks for watching, take care, we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.